Vicki Lewis. Please join me as we take a look at the making of this epic adventure on the Sci-Fi Channel's Godzilla Attacks Special Effects Secrets Review. Do you know you've interrupted a three-year study of the Chernobyl earthworm? Yeah, you're the worm guy, right? I enjoy monster movies since I was a kid, so it's sort of fun to see a big monster and then scream in fear. It's because of a man-made accident, the Chernobyl earthworms are now 17% larger than they were before. 17%, huh? Sounds pretty big. They're enormous. It's like kind of for sure the biggest monster out there. Yeah, I'm a biologist. I take radioactive samples and I study them. That's great. Here's your sample. Study it. What sample? You're standing in it. I don't see it. If I were Godzilla, a person would be about the size of this tooth. <laughs> idea of the movie was that Godzilla is so big. You have to always like kind of never forget his size. You don't know how big that is, you know, until you will really see it on film. I would get ideas here and there of the scale of Godzilla, but I really didn't know how big he was until I saw the movie. It is that size relationship. If you think of the old Godzilla films, they were limited to put a big guy in a rubber suit, to shoot him in slow motion, and so he's basically waddling down a street. The fact is lizards don't waddle, but for the most part they're pretty quick. We wanted one that was sleeker, more agile, faster, one that could run over 200 miles an hour. Godzilla is large in almost every sense of the word. He's too fast! She's bigger than I thought. Powerful. Running would be a good idea. This is a story where a big animal comes and says, no, I'm, I'm in control. You're, you're little mice, and I'm going to chase you around. The computer-generated images, anything you do, they can justify it. We figured while we were a while into making this movie that it would be way more CG than we ever anticipated. The style was he's agile, he's graceful, but he still maintains his weight and mass. To, to get both of those qualities is difficult. I didn't want to have a big T-Rex running down the streets of New York. I wanted to still have some sort of a dragon. We felt that in a strange way that it was going to be more respectful to the old Godzilla to have a new Godzilla. Once we designed that creature, it was, well, if he could do that, rather than he's invulnerable to the military. Where'd he go? He's more clever. So that set up the, uh, I think, amazing action sequences of the picture. Echo flight, get together, guys. Prepare to fire. Echo four, ready. Echo two, ready. Fire. I think we got him. That's what also drew me to the to the picture, like the sheer size of Godzilla and the fun of like having him run through New York. By placing the creature with well-known monuments gives you a size relationship. So the, the more you can associate him with things that are familiar to the eye, the more the effects look real, and the more sense of, of, of the creature you get. Please stay with us, because when we come back, you will meet the incredible cast and crew as we continue with Godzilla Attacks. Special effects secrets revealed. of Godzilla is brought to you by Propecia. Talk to your doctor today. As with any great film, it's of course the characters who bring it to life. In Godzilla, it's the unique 
ensemble of actors which make our story multi-dimensional. They had to fashion actions and reactions to a creature 20 stories tall that could only be visualized in their imaginations. Tell me that's not another parade. Um, I don't think that's a parade. <laughs> what the hell is that? Roland would have to tell us the levels of our fear, and we'd all have to sort of meet on the same page. I would be frightened, and I would always look out of the corner of my eye, look at Maria, and think, you know, because I was scared that I'd be like really frightened, and she'd be sort of brave. Well, you sort of know what you're in for. I knew it was going to be a lot of reacting to nothing, but you can't really know what it's like. Devlin promises that this creature will be more ferocious and spectacular than any of his predecessors. to be this kind of cartoony, human-like, lovable character. I want him to be a lizard, but yet I still want to know when he's angry. I want to know when he's sad. I want to know when he's content. I want to know when he's hungry. That's a lot of fish. So to find special effects people who could do all the other techniques and then on top of it, make it act, that was a true challenge. go back in and add eye motion that made sense with the action. You get a sense that he's thinking. He's a very elegant creature, but when little things are in his way, the stuff gets bent out of his way, or a corner of a building goes. The whole point about it is creating something that is living, breathing, and is completely believable. It's a nice thing to have something real and see it interact with buildings and walls. Action! And see all that stuff crashing. I think Roland inspired himself more from the original one than any other Godzilla. It's going back to the roots, which I thought was a great concept. Roland is an incredibly visionary director. I mean, he, he gets these images in his head. In fact, when we write the script, I sit at a typewriter writing a scene, and he sits on the opposite side of the table drawing in the way he'd want to shoot the scene and what, how he wants it to look. And so we wanted to open up the film to a kind of an international feeling, because since so much of it does take place in Manhattan, we wanted to get a kind of worldwide feeling of Godzilla first before we got into the meat of the story. So Roland chose a bunch of different locations and tried to come up with different visual ways to express what Godzilla has done without showing the creature. I tried to give it a little feeling that, you know, if you're a biologist and you've studied worms for years, that if an enormous lizard came along, it would probably be like, that's a good day in the biology lab. This animal is much too big to be some kind of lost dinosaur. Well, don't tell me what it is and tell me what the hell it is. What about the traces of radiation? The radiation isn't an anomaly. It's the clue. The original 1954 Godzilla, released in Japan, was meant as a strong warning against the effects of nuclear testing. If you do constantly bombard nature with something of this magnitude, eventually Mother Nature will put her foot down, and that foot belonged to Godzilla. It was first sighted off of the French Polynesian Pacific, right? That area has been exposed to dozens of nuclear tests over the past 30 years. Uh-huh, hence the radiation. No, more than that. I believe that this is a mutated aberration. A hybrid caused by the fallout on these islands. Uh-huh. Like your earthworms? Yes, yes. We're looking at a completely incipient creature. The dawn of a new species. The first of its kind. Nick wants to stop him, but he has some sympathy toward him because he really does view him as an animal, not as a villain and not as somebody plotting anything. He's like a fish out of the sea. An essence of adventure coming. Night. The new Godzilla bears almost no resemblance to its earlier predecessor. It has to be 100% believable. You look into these eyes and you believe there is a living animal and it's thinking and it knows 
what it's doing. And I wanted those eyes to look very, very intense. So for that, I decided to have the pupil inside the eye to not be black like most of the animals or humans, but make it white. It's almost like he's got lava inside. It's like a creature of fire. We actually looked at some footage from alligators, and we found out that the jaw really only has this one hinge. It's a really simple mechanism. So this was applied to the creature. How does the foot bend when the creature takes off? I went and studied some of the ostriches because those are the biggest birds. See how their feet were actually bending when the, when the foot would take off from the ground. We always pretend that we see Godzilla in the frame. And that's part of the whole magic of, of making a movie. Stay with us, okay? Because there's more Godzilla attacks, special effects secrets revealed here on the Sci-Fi Channel. The sheer size of Godzilla made it a massive endeavor for cast and crew. Roland said, I'm going to shoot the film as though Godzilla were a real actor on my set. And he said to Volker and the special effects people, you guys have to figure out to, how to get him in the picture. Because I'm going to shoot him with a handheld camera, I'm going to shoot it with a steady cam, I'm going to shoot it from helicopters. I'm not going to use motion controlled cameras. And by doing so, he makes the film feel much more real because it's shot the way you would really shoot it. made this more interesting than your basic high fall was we have actually have the cameras inside the rig which you'll see back here which gives you the element of shooting through the windows and giving you the height element which is a little bit different perspective than you normally see from a regular high fall. Dean and Roland explain what was going on with the effects and why we needed the same shot over and over again like climbing over the fence we'd have to have to actually do it in the alley then we'd have to do it for green screen. Some sequences are stretched out over weeks and weeks or months you know, you do a little piece here, two weeks later another little piece, and a month later another piece. It was a complicated sequence and none of it was there. We had to justify why you wouldn't see this foot hitting you right away, so we worked out he'd be fiddling. Can't get his tape in his camera, so he's looking down. Okay, finally gets it in, points the camera up, and there's a foot about to hit him. storyboards for a movie but in this one I mean you really did it's like okay so this shot this is the shot we're getting this is the foot is where okay to the ground and the, like the basic rough form of the foot shape which later gets replaced by the computer generated foot of the creature also we had these huge nets hanging from a crane opening these nets on cue and all this stuff is falling down at the same time the cars crash against the barrels this is how you create your basic footage
they built what I consider to be the most amazing structure or skeleton that I've ever seen. He had over 500 expressions written into him, and basically when his foot lifts up from the ground, you automatically got toe curl, and it would automatically come down, and when it landed, the toe spread would happen, and the weight, and they'd bulge out a little bit. Picture this, okay? Screaming crowds, crashing cars, and army troops, right? All reacting to a creature standing 20 stories tall. All right, add to the scene flying helicopters and stormy weather, and maybe you can imagine what the special effects team was up against. Fire! Fire! I was very happy with the way the elements came together. You could uh, fill in with CG debris whenever necessary, live action debris. In a lot of cases, it's hard to tell. We intermix some CG cabs with six scale cabs. We go into a library of elements we created in the beginning of the movie, like rain, different kinds of falling debris, cut and paste them together, and all these little details creates the believability at the end. Sometimes we would have to add rain impact hits on the ground. We took the actual elements that Volker had shot. There's an element of darkness we created in the movies. You see sheets of rain, and the creature gets you know, slowly revealed. Got a big one, baby. Roland and Dean's approach was to make a really fast moving animal. He's not only ramming the pier, this pier has to disintegrate. So we put all these uh, pyro charges into the pier, and the pier is basically exploding behind the running fishermen when the creature comes out. We actually did an entire sequence of the movie uh, underwater, 100% CG, and it really is believable. The sequence where the, the boats are pulled backwards is a combination of, of real boats and model. You had to at least be one to six or one quarter scale. If you say, well, let's just do 24 scale, it'll always look like a toy in a bathtub, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. What takes it over the edge is that the, when we use the shots of the models being pulled backwards, we digitally put people onto those boats, and that's what made it feel believable and real. Could a creature like Godzilla be possible? Stay with us for more Godzilla Attacks. Special effects secrets revealed. Godzilla is a creature created by us. Now we're faced with an intriguing question. Should we destroy this unique creature, or do we have a responsibility to preserve this new species? He's pregnant. If he's the first of his kind, then how can he be pregnant? I mean, doesn't he need a mate? Not if he reproduces asexually. Where's the fun in that? I kept thinking. Why would he travel so far? But it makes perfect sense. Lots of animals travel great distances for reproduction. That's what he's doing in New York. He's nesting. It's the age-old question, what comes first, the Godzilla or the egg? And in this case, it was actually Godzilla. So after we kill the creature, then we'll search for the nest. You know that if the creature survives, we won't. And at the same time, it means us no harm. Monster movies have almost always portrayed the monster as a beast that must be destroyed. The pure essence of good versus evil. In Devlin and Emmerich's Godzilla, those lines are blurred.
you still ultimately find yourself rooting for him. What if we weren't meant to be the heirs of, of this planet, that there's something that, that could evolve beyond us? I believe there's still some kind of creatures that we don't know about. Wait until he enters the park. Those are probably the most important moments in the movie when you figure out, wow, I really believe this could happen. I'm Vicki Lewis. Thank you for joining us.